This is our kitchen trash can. It's a repurposed whiskey barrel that provides plenty of trash pickup for the large parties we throw here. We like it, but it's getting old and busted. So it's time for an upgrade. We're gonna make our trash can better, faster, stronger. First step, take the trash can liner out. We won't be modifying this. And then the lid is removed. The lid is pretty heavy. It doesn't look that great because it's all beat up and it's held on by a very old hinge and stuck screws. So the impact wrench is used and the screws come right out. Then the barrel is loaded on a handy dolly. Because it's heavy, I'm old and also lazy. Out in the wood shop, the first hoop comes right off because the nails fell out and it's just hanging there. The other hoops are held on by these T-shaped nails. I guess it's a Western thing or a whiskey thing, not sure. But they came out with the vice grips. There were about 30 of these nails holding the hoops in. Most of them were concentrated around the top and bottom hoops, but the middle hoops were held on except for the one that just fell off. I had to pry out one or two of them, but the rest of them came out pretty easily with the vice grips. Once all the nails had been removed, the hoops came right off. Then I removed the foam ring around the bottom. It was just cushion tape that was on it, but once I took this off, everything was loose and the barrel could easily fall apart. And as you can see, the bottom fell right out. That was kind of startling. The wooden planks on a barrel are called staves, and to prevent my staves from falling onto my feet and crushing them, I wrapped the whole thing in bungee cords. The whiskey barrel is now ready for disassembly and rework. You can see here just how dirty it's gotten over the years. I removed one of the staves and began working on it with my orbital sander loaded with an 80 grit pad. The orbital sander worked and cleaned that stave right up. Look at that, it looks brand new, but it sure did take a long time to do it. So a quick word about the barrel. Why am I doing all this? Well, whiskey is made by making a barrel out of white oak and then burning the inside of the barrel. And then you put the whiskey in the barrel and age it and the burnt white oak gives it flavor. I'm not a drinker, but apparently that's where whiskey gets its flavor. Great. So we have a whiskey barrel here and it has these staves, these, uh, these, these wood pieces that make up the edges. And the inside is burned. It's all covered in ash and it's very dirty. Um, and then of course the outside is just dirty because it's been, it's been used as a barrel and it has, just has wear and tear. So what I'm going to do, you've already seen how I sanded it down and it looks good. Well, I'm going to paint this with sealer to seal in the ash on the inside just to make it less dirty and then we'll sand the outside like we did all the other ones and rebuild our barrel, our whiskey barrel with the burnt inside. The sealant I used wasn't anything fancy, it was just whatever clear paint I had laying around the shop. Some of it was lacquer, some of it was clear coat, it didn't matter. We were just trying to seal in the ash and this actually worked. We didn't have any more ash problems after this. We're going to switch from the hand sander to the belt sander because belt sanders do not forget, they do not forgive, and they cover a multitude of errors. But they do generate a lot of sawdust, so the fanboy is about to get quite the workout. To make it easier to sand things with the belt sander, I also switched to my vice table. That old Craftsman vice table did an outstanding job holding each one of the staves in place and the belt sander made short work of the grime on each stave. But that old barrel fought back. I burned through three 40 grit sander belts to finish the job. But one by one, I got through the staves. Many, many minutes later. The sanding was extra fun because it was almost 100 degrees in the shop. The barrel is made of white oak and it should take stain well, so we're going to use this red barn stuff. Uh, I don't know what the fashionable colors are for barrels, uh, but we like red and this is some pretty good stain here. We think it's going to do a good job, so we're going to go with red. Your barrel may vary. The barn red stain was pretty thick, the thickest I've ever used. It was almost like paint, but that white oak absorbed the red color very well. 
I just applied it with the rag, rubbed it in a little bit for it to absorb, and pretty soon our barrel started looking like an old-fashioned country barn that had been painted red. Then I clear coated the barn red staves with whatever clear coat paint I had left over from sealing the ashes on the other side. I think I gave it about four coats. And now we have some well protected barn red barrel staves. The bottom of the barrel was held together just with dowels, I guess because you don't want to put glue in your whiskey. So I took it apart and glued it together because we're not going to have whiskey in our barrel. Next day. I sanded off the hoops, painted them black, and brought them in before it started raining. It's time to reassemble the barrel. So there's that glued together bottom on Cardi McCart face, our cart. And then the three hoops that will be on the bottom section of the barrel. They're concentric, so they sit inside each other. The plan is just to hook the staves into this base and build the barrel back up. This seemed like a pretty simple operation until I realized that I did not have enough hands to hold all the staves together as I was building it. That did not work at all, but at least it didn't fall on my foot. I was a little concerned about that. So I tried it again in the opposite direction. The staves would now be on the floor of the shop and I'd use a clamp to hold the first stave in place. But once again, I didn't have enough hands available to do the job. That didn't work either. Perhaps I should rethink my dream of becoming a barrel maker. The third try involved two clamps to hold two staves, one on each side of the barrel hoop. That did the trick. Now the barrel hoop was where I needed it, and I could add in the staves, and my two hands were enough to hold it together since I was no longer trying to hold the barrel hoop up. And before I knew it, I had a barrel once again. Hey, maybe I can make a living doing this. Yay! I hammered the top hoop down flush with the top of the staves, and that pulled everything together and tightened it up. Then I added the second two hoops and hammered them into place. But I'm not done yet! The three top hoops did their job, and I was able to flip the barrel over without it falling to pieces. I was actually very concerned about this, but it worked. Then I put the other two center hoops in place and then brought the bottom in and hooked it into the staves. This is what I tried to do upside down earlier and it didn't work. The bottom went in very well and I had to use a screwdriver on a couple of the staves to make it go in, but it did fit. Then I used an iron pipe and a sledgehammer to hammer the hoops down into position. The iron pipe was used because the block of wood I'd used on the other hoops had been beaten to pieces and it shredded itself. So I got smart and used something that wouldn't shred. Now that the hoops are seated, we're going to put the nails in to hold the hoops in place. That will make it official. Time to hammer. Those original nails were pretty stout, so I didn't have to use new ones. I just used the old ones. They worked great and they went right back in the same holes they'd been in before. And I was really thankful for those original holes. I didn't have to drill any steel today. That was nice. A 60 inch strip of felt tape was put across those bottom staves so they won't scratch the floor when the barrel moves around. The same black paint I used on the hoops is used to paint the top of the staves black. Everything else is masked off. This just makes the top of the barrel the same color as the hoops. That hole is called the bung hole and I put the plug right back in. And despite what you may have heard, no TP was required for the bung hole. The last step was to paint the lid the same color as the hoops. We're probably going to replace this with something lighter in the future, but for now it fits, so we're going to go with it. whiskey barrel trash can already to take trash from whoever comes here to the house and in the future when the quarantine stuff is over and we start having parties again this thing we put to good use it'll be full all the time as life returns to all of us so we're real happy about this it's it's a it's a good upgrade it didn't cost very much at all i just tore it down cleaned it off put some stain on it and some clear coat 
put it back together. So this is probably maybe a $20 job that I did to clean this up, but the difference is remarkable. Very happy about this, and it's quite sturdy, so it's gonna be a good trash can for years to come. So sometimes we do stuff like this, sometimes we do electronics, sometimes we do weird stuff. Here's weird stuff in the shop right now. It's coming in the future, we'll get there. But this was something we needed to do. Oh, and the floor, I know it's covered in paint. That's because we're about to tear the floor out and put pile in all through here. So we used the floor as a drop cloth because we knew it was going away. So ignore that mess, it's gonna look better. It's all part of the kitchen upgrade. Thanks to our patrons for helping us do this sort of thing. We love you, we appreciate your support. And if you join us as a patron at any level, you'll get regular reports of what we're doing. And, and every month I put out what we're doing the next month. So uh, this was on a previous, hey, here's what's upcoming video. So there's the barrel. We do stuff like this all the time. So if you like what you're seeing, subscribe and ring that bell and join us. Check out our other videos, they're all fun. But that's it for today. I'll see you next time.